The Bina officinalis is one of the classical medicinal herbs. Its reputation as a sacred plant dates at least to ancient Egypt. It was considered sacred by the Persians, the Druids and worshippers of Thor in Scandinavia. The Greeks and the Romans used brushes made from vervain to brush the altars in the temples. Known as the Tears of Isis in ancient Egypt, it was thought to have sprung from the tears of the goddess as she mourned the death of the god Osiris. Early Christian era folk legend has it that it was used to staunch the bleeding of Christ's wounds on the cross. Hence it also has names such as Holy Herb, or in Wales, Devil's Bane. This association led to it being used for ointments to drive out and repel demonic illnesses. In Vervain's botanical name, verbena is an ancient Roman term used for any sacrificial herb that is considered to be very powerful. And officinalis is a Latin term to describe any plant officially used in medicine or herbalism. Many common names in Europe associate vervain with iron, although the plant contains no iron at all. However, there have been many archaeological finds of vervain seeds on the Iberian Peninsula from the Roman era in the Roman port of Iran that was an exporter of iron and other metals. A perennial herb, vervain grows up to 70 centimetres tall. It has lobed and toothed leaves and the flowers grow in clusters on delicate spikes. It's mainly grown for its herbal properties. During the Middle Ages, vervain was an ingredient of magicians and witches' potions. It was used for protection and linked with many divine and supernatural forces. Highly regarded as an aphrodisiac, it was also a medieval cure for a throat tumour and listed as a cure for over 50 medical conditions which have never been proven to work. They were a tad strange in the Middle Ages. Vervain has anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antispasmodic and analgesic properties. It contains over 20 beneficial plant compounds, including iridoid glycosides, flavonoids and triterpenoids, which may be responsible. Recent studies have suggested that vervain may potentially be beneficial in fighting tumours and seizures and improving brain function following a stroke. It has proven to be comparable to diazepam in reducing anxiety. It is also showing antimicrobial activity and antibacterial effects against Staphylococcus, E. coli and Salmonella that were more effective than amoxicillin. It is also shown to have anti-inflammatory activity and improve gum health and support heart health. The vein has had a long use as a tea for its calming effect that can help to relieve stress and promote sleep. It has also been used for treating upper respiratory tract symptoms and minor cuts and skin infections. All uses that seem to be backed by modern scientific studies. The one claim that is not backed up by modern studies is its use in urinary tract infections. It does appear to increase urine output, but it does so by irritating the kidneys. This may cause long-term damage. For this reason, vervain should be avoided in people with kidney disease. The irritation to the kidneys is caused by verbenalin that is found in the plant. The herb also produces an oily substance that may cause contact dermatitis, but generally a mild form with localised rash and redness. Older research shows that drinking vervain tea with meals may also inhibit iron absorption by 59%, and its vitamin K content may lead to herb-drug interactions and lessen the effect of blood-thinning drugs like warfarin. Vervain is generally recognised as safe, However, pregnant and breastfeeding women, people with iron deficiency and those taking blood thinners should avoid drinking this tea or consuming any vervain containing products. We will post these cautions in the comments of the video. 
The following references have been used in making this video. We will also post this information below. If you've enjoyed watching this video, you may like to see one of our other videos from our Materia Medica playlist.